Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 11 of Direwolf20 server play series. You can see me hanging out in my new Thalmcraft room, which will probably be getting some upgrades and some fancification going on pretty soon. Um, what am I doing right now? I'm doing a little bit of research, and I want to show you guys a couple things that I didn't tell you about research in the last episode. So first off, I want you to first look at the Thalmanomicon. You can see I've done a little bit of research here and gotten something very important. It's probably one of the first things you're going to want to work towards, and that would be, uh, first off, research expertise which is pretty nice, um, and uh, research mastery, which is probably the most important research you're going to get early, early on. The reason for that? Well, first off, research expertise. It allows you um, to go ahead and move runes up to three possessions at a time instead of two, and it also um, allows uh, red herring aspects, which basically are like aspects that you um, might expect to be part of the research but really aren't, and what that does is remove runes from the table instead of actually, um, you know, doing anything else. Then we've got research mastery. This is the important one, okay? Uh, it removes more runes from red herring runes. It allows you to move up to four positions at a time instead of three, and then finally you're able to move active runes though only a single position at a time so this is really important the reason for that well if you were paying attention last time let's find something that i have like a ton of like metallum okay cool so thaumium is a magical metal cool that sounds like a good research so in the past before i did this research um if i wanted to move these metal aspects around i would have to turn the research off and watch how much metallum i have i have 214 now i have 213 and i can move them into position Okay, uh, I think it's this one, probably. And then it turn it back on. Oh, so I had to use two metallum to turn it off and then turn it back on. Okay, um, so the cool thing about this aspect, or the, the, the knowledge mastery, is that once you get it, you can move these... Um, things while they're still active. You can only move them one step at a time, as we saw. Also, there's about a random chance of um, whenever you do try to move it, it actually turns off the rune and you have to reactivate it. But it's still better than always having to turn it off. At least you have a chance to save yourself from some research points. The other thing is you're going to run out of ink. When you can't move runes anymore, you'll see down here on the bottom right, you have run out of ink. It's really easy to repair, though. Uh, go ahead and toss your scribing tools in a crafting table with an ink sack, and you've refilled it. Cool. And then the third and most, uh, you know, probably helpful thing that you'll learn from this research is sometimes, like I said, the um, lines here have to connect in the same direction at all times. So this has to go up here and then over here. Sometimes it loops back like this. So a good tip is to take an, a non-activated room and stick it in the middle there. And it kind of blocks these two from connecting and then it forces the connection here. So I didn't have to activate or deactivate any runes and I didn't even have to move any runes that were already activated. I was able to just kind of move one that didn't matter and block off this connection, allowing this uh, straight up connection here. And I just learned how to make Thaumium. Cool, a magical metal. Pretty useful stuff, by the way. You can make some nice Thaumium tools out of it. And thaumium tools in general and armor are basically similar to iron, but have um, better um, uh, um, uh, enchantability. So it's pretty cool. A little better than iron and more enchanting. Can't go wrong. Nice, right? So that's me doing some research. I was just kind of playing around in between episodes, researching a bit. There is one thing that I got, though, that I'm really excited for. I got it kind of early on. Let's see. Let's find Thaumaturgy. So remember, um, I did get that fire focus here. I don't really need the fire wand too much. While it's nice to have, uh, I don't really need it. But the one wand um, focus that I always love to get my hands on is the wand of equal trade, which I did happen to get. So I'm going to need some Quicksilver, some Nether Quartz, some order shards and some entropy shards. I'm also gonna need a wand in here that has a bit of order, Perdito, and Terra on it. Okay, so how's my wand looking? I've got a wand with order and a little bit of earth and zero Perdito, that's great. Okay, uh, so one other place that you can get um, this stuff from when you kill enemies, you'll notice sometimes little, um, what look like experience orbs. Check out my, uh, let's say, oh great. Neither one of those ones. Well, I got two Perdito from that, as you can see. Let's kill this dude. Basically, uh, they do occasionally drop little um, orbs of magical energy. So you can see I'm up to six Perdito now, so that's good. So when in doubt, if you're really having trouble finding any of these nodes, run around outside and kill some enemies. You'll be surprised just how much you get from it. You will fill up your wand pretty quickly. You're going to want to find yourself some good aura nodes nearby. Don't get me wrong. Ah, a little nasty zombie 
thing. I hate those things. So yeah, look at all the Perdito I've already gotten. And a bit of uh, you know, air and, and stuff as well. So trust me, you're gonna wanna find some good aura nodes. Speaking of finding good aura nodes, I think, let's see. I also got the research. I believe it's an artifice. Goggles of Revealing. So I need a little bit of everything in order to get my Goggles of Revealing. Let's go make some. And then I can find some more Aura Nodes, and then I can get a Wand of Equal Trade, and then I can be really happy. Alright, so, uh, what did I need? I needed, according to this book here, two Thermometers, one for each eye of course, a bit of gold, and a bit of leather. Mob Drops for leather. Uh, we're gonna need uh, one, two, of each crystal. And then we're probably gonna need like, I don't know, four gold for the thermometers and then six in total. So that should look cool. So let's craft ourselves. Oh wait, I need a little bit of glass. Two of them, please. I'll just get a stack. I always have a need for glass and I never have it on me. So two thermometers and then over to our arcane work table here. So here's how you uh, craft using this thing. So according to our Thaumonomicon, we need to infuse a little bit of magical energy into the arcane workbench as it crafts the item. We need five of these aspects and three order and perdito each, okay? In order to make that happen, we need a wand with at least those um, aspects inside of it, so built in, right? Um, then we take our two thermometers and craft it just like you would craft a regular old crafting recipe. But you'll note here that it's flashing and telling you which aspects are needed. So five of these guys, and then three and three. So all you have to do is put that wand in the top right, and it's ready to craft, provided that that wand has enough stuff in it. Goggles revealing. See Iron Helmet? Hello, awesome goggles that are very fashionable. Hello, sir. How are you? All right, goggles are revealing. Basically, a thermometer on your face. Yep, you don't have to carry this thing around anymore um, to look through in order to find stuff. You do still need to scan things, though. So if you want to scan um, entities and stuff, like that Hecate over there, which I can't learn anything from, but I'm still going to kill because they're horrible creatures that hurt you a lot. Um, yeah, but you shouldn't need this anymore to see your um, aura nodes. So let me go find one and see about recharging my wand a little bit, and then we can start getting a wand of equal trade, which, honestly, one of my favorite Thaumcraft items. One of them. One of many. So to demonstrate this ability, I'm heading back towards the, you know, back of my house, and I know there's an aura node right here. I found it earlier. Wearing my goggles revealing, ah, we can see it clean, plain as day. Awesome. So I'm going to look around and see if I can't find just a few more aura nodes so I can get my wand charged up. Yeah, if I find any good ones, I'll let you know. One other thing that's kind of nice to do, I'm not going to say you need to, but it's probably going to be very helpful later on. Mark these on your map. So that's a fire and an order node, right? So let's bring up our map and just put a marker name, fire order. And uh, we'll put this in the marker group of Thaumcraft aura nodes. That ought to be good. X, Y, Z, and we're good to go. So you can uh, change on your map here which group you're displaying. So you can see all, you can see only my stuff that I've put down notes on, any player deaths I've had recently, and then my Thaumcraft aura nodes are in their own separate group. So I've kind of marked one here, and uh, as soon as I move off this position, I should plainly be able to see it. There we go, fire order. Cool, right? So, uh, yeah, I've no noted the location of that node, and, ooh, I see one in the distance. Keep your eyes open, because they're even hard to see, especially during the day. Uh, what do we got here? This would look like to be a fire and an earth one. And do yourself a favor, scan these anytime you encounter them, because you'll always get aspects, even if you've already scanned those aspects before, you'll always get them, okay? So, there we go. Cool. And I see one, what looks like, ooh, is this a Thaumcraft dungeon? It might be. I didn't even notice this was here, but look at the uh, look at the terrain we're in. Eerie. Yeah, this is definitely a Thaumcraft dungeon. Anytime you have an eerie terrain, that's... Yeah, see? It's well hidden behind this tree. Eerie terrains typically spawn as a result of some uh, nasty aura nodes that happen to be nearby. Let's sneak inside here and see what kind of trouble we can find. Looking around. Oh yeah, look at that. We can see here... Oh yeah, it's a very nasty aura node. If we scan it, we'll even notice that it says it's a sinister node. That's definitely not good because it means bad things for anybody who's coming around. So let's make sure this area is well lit because we're definitely going to have some um, problems. Ah. It's like a little mini dungeon area. Let's see what we get in here. 
hopefully something good. Do yourself a favor, light it up real good, because, you know, there's a couple spawners. There's usually in here one zombie and one skeleton spawner. And you want to get it well lit before you have too many spawning problems. Let's give ourselves an F7 just so we can see any other spawn areas available. Alright, that's not good. Alright, we've mostly... Whoa! Alright, so look what we've got here. We've got a giant, furious zombie. Yeah. Ah, oh boy. That's an even bigger one. Furious zombie. These guys are nasty. They usually tend to spawn near these um, sinister nodes, is what can cause them to occur. And you want to do yourself a favor and watch out, because they are bad news. I don't want that creeper to blow up my goodies down there. I think that should be good. Got him. Nice. All right. Relatively safe? Maybe. Floppy disk. Eh. Rotten flesh. Eh. Ooh, a builder's wand. Now that is something very rare and useful. And a division sigil. Also rare and useful. And the amazing Technicolor glasses. Wow, this was a, uh... See? I was gonna say, like, these two chests are kind of, like, meh. But, wow, that was a good chest to find. All right, let's get out of here. Anything else I need to scan while I'm around? Ooh, scan monster spawners. Yeah, you'll find some good stuff in them. I think you can only spawn one monster spawner, but you can't, uh, you can't scan different ones. Oh well. All right, so that was a fruitful dungeon. Very cool. Let's get home and uh, store these goodies. The builder's wand I'm pretty excited to find, as is the division sigil. We're gonna play with those very soon. Uh-oh, on the way home, I see some nasty things in the distance. I'm kind of afraid doing... Ah, oh boy, they're throwing snowballs at me, and it's not good. Oh, and they're slowing me. That's even worse. Running across. It's the blizz. You've encountered blazes before, but I don't know if you've encountered the blizz. I haven't even encountered the blizz, because they're relatively new to Thermal Expansion. It's one of the new Thermal Expansion monsters. If there was one by himself, I might go over there and check it out, but there's three of them hanging out. So I really don't want to get engaged in a fight like that. All right, let's put some stuff away. How are we doing? Back at our base, we've got a pretty good wand. I could use a little bit of air aspect, but eh, I'll be all right. Let's put away these items. We'll just let everything sort. Ooh, ender lily seeds. I will definitely take these outside to my little ender lily farm. While I'm at it, I can see if there's any new growth. Oh yeah, look at that. Awesome. Now we've got five. Ha. Ah. Okay. Let's make our wand of equal trade, which I'm pretty excited to do. And ender pearl. I'm not sure if I've used all the ones I had. Oh no, I've got a good amount of ender pearls. Alright, so wand of equal trade. I needed some quicksilver. That's right. I need four nether quartz, two er order and entropy shards each, and then some quicksilver, which is pretty easy to make. You'd get that cinnabar ore that you find underground and just melt it up. Redstone furnace, cook for me please. There we go, quicksilver ore. Okay, so you, these guys, order and entropy, something like that, and then I put my wand in. And I've got enough. Now you might also notice that it's only costing me 15.75 and 10.5 each. Instead of this guy, which reports the wand of equal trade recording 15 and 10. Okay. The reason for that is your wand actually um, has a modifier on it. Uh, as does my armor and stuff. So your iron-capped wooden wand, eh, iron's not the best wand available out there, and it's actually going to cost more than it normally would because you're using such a basic and simple wand. That's why you might want to get some of these upgraded cores and caps. Uh, copper caps are just a little bit better. Uh, gold caps are really nice, and there's no penalty uh, when used to channel V. So there's no penalty in using gold caps instead of iron, which we might definitely want to do at some point. But we'll get to the different wands and cores eventually. But we've now got our wand focus, equal trade. Awesome. Let's go and take a look at what we can do with the wand focus of equal trade. I think what I'm going to need to do is smelt up a bit of cobblestone. So I'll be back in a few minutes once that's complete. So let's see how we can use this awesome wand 
of equal trade wand focus. It's real easy. Just press the F key, I think, by default on your keyboard, and you'll switch your wand focus um, from the default, which is no wand focus at all, uh, to the wand of equal trade. Now, as you create different foci, and believe me, there's quite a few to get, there's more than are even seen here, uh, you're going to go ahead and have uh, a lot of different ones you can get. Shift F to completely remove whatever wand foci you have, it'll go back into your inventory. And you can eventually get a wand focus pouch, which can carry around all your foci for you, so you don't have to have, you know, 10 different items in your inventory. Let's see what it can do, shall we? Uh, I'm gonna make, using my stone here, some stone bricks. Cool. So let's say I wanted to convert my house from cobblestone to stone bricks. Well, it's actually pretty easy. First off, you just need to shift right click with your wand of equal trade like so. And it's going to, in the top left corner of the screen up here, show you uh, which wand you currently have, uh, or what item is currently the target. Okay, so you can see here I've got 256 cobblestone in my inventory available to equal trade. And here I've got 15 um, stone bricks in my inventory ready to equal trade. Now just right click on any other block in the world, and it'll convert all the ones nearby into uh, stone bricks for you, uh, provided you have enough stone bricks in your inventory to complete the transfer. It'll get a good decent size of it. Uh, you can also, if you want, just left click to be a little bit more precise about it and do one item at a time. So if you just left click, it'll take care of that. You can see here that it's going to use 0 0.07 um, order and perdito each, okay? Uh, so right click to get uh, a bunch of ones. Fancy, right? So wand of equal trade, definitely gonna be used pretty soon to, you know, fancify up my house. But for now, it's gonna take a while to smelt all this uh, smooth stone we're gonna want. So I'll be back in a little bit once I've got a little bit of that stuff ready and we're ready to move on to the next project. Okay guys, we are back. And one of the things I wanna start working on is a Coke oven. Yep, that's right. I'm sure two pieces of sand. One, two. So you're going to need 26 of these coke oven bricks, which are made up mostly of brick and sand. Okay, let's go downstairs and build ourselves a coke oven. And I think I'm going to bring with me a bit of coal. Yeah, that ought to do. I'm going to need more coal, let me tell you. Well, that's kind of what I'm working towards. What do we got in here? Ah, there we go. Nice little area that I've dug out in preparation. So you need to build a three by three base and you're gonna wanna build a three by three centerpiece, but it needs to be hollow in the center, okay? And then a three by three, not hollow on the top. And once you place in that last brick right on the outside, it should form into a multi-block structure, structure known as the Coke oven. There we go. Now the Coke oven can cook up uh, a couple different things. Uh, one of the main uh, things you're gonna wanna do is throw some coal in there and you'll get some coal coke. You can also throw blocks of coal in there to get uh, blocks of coal coke. Pretty cool, right? Um, and what you'll basically get is creosote oil. That's the important stuff. That's what we're looking for. You can also throw in a bunch of different types of wood and get yourself some charcoal, which you'll get very small amounts of creosote oil for. But yeah, you know what, it works. So why am I looking to get creosote oil? Well, let me tell you. Creosote oil can be used for quite a few different things. Um, you can mostly get it with wooden ties. That's what's going to allow us to make some pretty important stuff. Specifically, uh, we're gonna be able to make all kinds of different tracks with our wooden ties. You have to combine your wooden tie into a wooden rail bed for most track types, and then you can get uh, Minecraft uh, tracks. So we're gonna to wanna to start building something with minecart tracks. Uh, I'm thinking what I'd like to do, so I'm gonna let that creosote oil start cooking up. The next thing I wanna work on is a little bit of something from Steve's Carts. That's right, I think I'd like to start a Steve's Carts tree farm. One of the things we're gonna need a lot of is wood, okay? So I'd like to get started working towards a decent sized farm to automatically produce and uh, collect wood and saplings. All right, for that, we're gonna use Steve's Carts. Let's take a look at the mod. Steve's Carts is a mod that gives you all kinds of different mine carts, okay? And all of them can be um, customized and uh, it's all modular, so you can build a bunch of different carts. It's a little expensive for some of the objects you're gonna wanna make, but the good news is that um, while it's a little bit expensive, you're gonna have some really nice automation coming out of it. So let's get started with the basics. What are we gonna need? First off, we're going to need a cart assembler, okay? This isn't too expensive to make. It's some, uh, you know, smooth stone, some iron, and a simple PCB. We're gonna need two of these. So we're gonna need some redstone and gold, okay? Uh, and some iron. 
And let's see, I've got some smooth stone on me, so let's get our card assembler. The simple PCB, we're going to want two of these. And then the card assembler. There we go. Cool. Let's place this guy. Oh man, I don't even really have a room for this kind of thing. I guess we can throw it in here. Shouldn't be too bad. There we go. Card assembler. Cool. The card assembler is completely modular. There's a bunch of different carts we can make and a bunch of different modules we can put on our carts. And uh, basically what we're going to want to do is automate the whole process of farming wood. So for that, we're going to need a couple different things. Let's see what we want. Uh, first off, we're going to want a uh, basic wood cutter. Uh, there's a couple different wood cutters. There's also the hardened wood cutter and the Galgadorian wood cutter. Now, um, the, the basic wood cutter has a bit of durability that you need to constantly repair. Uh, the hardened wood cutter you don't have to repair quite as often, and the Galgadorian wood cutter is unbreakable in that you never have to repair it. But uh, Galgadorian stuff, yeah, it's a little expensive. You're going to need some Galgadorian metal, which requires some lumps of Galgador, which requires blocks of diamond and eyes of Galgador, which have all this other crazy ingredients. We're not going to go that far just yet. We're going to go with a simple lower tier mechanic, and then we'll probably upgrade these later down the line to be a little bit fancier and better. So let's take a look. I'm going to come up with a good cart design. As I mentioned, there's a bunch of different modules we can put into this cart, and I'm going to go and pick out exactly which ones I'm going to want. So I'll be back in a few moments once I'm ready. Okay guys, before we get started having a lot of fun with Steve's carts, I need to go get a couple resources, so I'll be right back once I've got them. Okay guys, done a little bit of mining, mostly for obsidian, which I didn't happen to have any of, and I think it's time to get started. So, let's see what we need to make. First off, we need to make a hull. Now there's a couple different types of hulls, your most basic being a wooden hull, you're not going to be able to do much with this. You can see there's a whole bunch of numbers on the screen that are probably way confusing, and you're like, what is going on with all this stuff? Don't worry, it's really not that hard. Uh, the next upgrade beyond that is the standard hull. That has uh, basically bigger numbers. You have more modular capacity, you have more module complexity cap, and uh, you have uh, more max engines and add-ons that you can put on. And then beyond that is reinforced hull, which is even more complex um, abilities. And then uh, finally there's a Galgadorian hull somewhere around here that's just crazy expensive, like all the Galgadorian stuff. Anything that has the word Galgadorian on it, just expect it to be really, really expensive. You know, we'll probably get to it eventually, but for now, what I want to make is a reinforced hull. This is the one I'm going to need for the tree farm that I want to make. In order to get this, we need five reinforced metal and some reinforced wheels, which require one reinforced metal each, so that's a total of seven reinforced metal. Being very meticulous about the amount of reinforced metal I need to make because you basically get five reinforced metal from, let's see, refined hardeners, okay. So it does cost diamonds, but it's not too bad, basically. You get raw hardener, you get two of these per diamond, and then three of these go into making five metal. So, okay. I know I'm going to need a little bit of extra metal, so I'm going to go towards making 10 metal. So I want six total of these things, and uh, therefore I'm going to need three sets of these. So I'm going to need three sets of these. That looks good. Boom. We can go smelt this up in our redstone furnace. And then once we've got the refined hardener, we combine it with some iron and a hardened mesh. A hardened mesh is uh, a combination of uh, some more refined hardeners. So actually, I forgot we need a little bit more of these. Yeah, okay. Let's get what we need to get from this. There we go. Might need a few more diamonds to be spent, but trust me, in the end, it's going to be worth it. So let's see. Um, I did three sets of those, right? Three diamonds. Now I'm going to need some of these. So where were we? Stabilized metal, hardened mesh. Okay, so I'm actually going to need um, another set. So this is four diamonds going into making five metals. All right, well, that's not too bad, really, if you think about it. Let this thing cook up. Okay. And then from here, I want to make sure I have my gold and iron and stuff on me. I don't know if I need any of that stuff, for now at least. Let's cook up what we're going to need for reinforced metal. There we go, five of that. Alright, so let me get another set of those. I'm going to need what looks like about, I don't know. I'll try and get away with just three. 
Yeah, I think I can pull off three. Once this is done smelting up, of course. Be right back. So we need two of these reinforced wheels and then make a cart out of it. Cool, we've got a reinforced hull. Now this is one of the, like, uh, I'm not gonna say that, it's not the top tier one, because the Gal Gadorian is, but it's definitely one of the upper tier Steve's carts. Obviously it requires a handful of diamonds to get put together and a couple other important things. So when I place this in here, we can see the base hull ready to be assembled, okay? Now you can see here that there's a hull capacity and a complexity cap. What's that about? Well, each module that you want to put on this cart is going to use up some modular cost. Okay, so the compact solar engine, for example, has a modular cost of 32. The note sequencer has a modular cost of 30. The um, hardened wood cutter, which is something I want to use, has a modular cost of 65. Okay, so the hardened wood cutter is what I'm going to use to chop down wood, has a modular cost of 65. The standard hull has a modular complexity cap of 50. So even though it has a modular capacity of 200, which means it can have 200 total um, modular cost, because the complexity cap is 50, you can't put anything on there that has a single um, cost higher than 50, which is why I couldn't put the hardened woodcutter on. It has a single cost of 65. It would not fit on your standard hull. So I had to use a hardened hull in order to use the hardened woodcutter. Make sense? Okay, so I do want to get myself a hardened wood cutter. This is probably going to be one of the more expensive items I have to get. It requires a diamond and uh, five hardened saw blades. So you guessed it, I need to make myself um, a little bit more of this hardened metal. So let's get myself one more diamond and I'll be back when it's all done. So first off, I'm going to need some advanced PCBs. You can see I got one of those. And then wooden saplings. Uh, spruce saplings ought to work. I think if I surround the advanced PCB, which is kind of like a little computer core for these things, we get the wood cutting core. Cool. Okay. Uh, from the hardened wood cutter, then we want to get ourselves one, two, three. Oh, wait. I need to make another one of you. And then another one of these. So I'm going to need five total of these hardened saw blades. And don't worry about having a few extra of this uh, hardened metal around, because remember I told you guys that um, this thing has durability? Well, you can use your hardened metal to repair it, which is definitely something we'll be doing. So it has a durability there. You can see it's 100%, of course, because I haven't crafted it yet. But um, as it gets used up um, by cutting down trees, we're going to have to repair it using some reinforced metal here. So, let's get two more of these. One, two. Cool. Hang on to this reinforced metal for later. And now I should be able to make my hardened woodcutter. Cool. That's probably one of the more complex things we're going to need to make. The next thing I want to have uh, on my uh, little guy here is uh, a solar engine. This guy is going to... Um, pretty much run off the power of the sun. So whenever it's sunny out, the minecart can travel along running on solar power. Sound pretty cool, right? It's definitely cool. Uh, so as I'm crafting this, we're going to need some glowstone. Told you I might need some of that. And I'll probably need a bit more iron. So I'm just gonna grab it while I'm over there. Okay, so the solar engine, one, two, three, four of these. And the solar engine should be pretty good to go. I'll need some pistons. No wood on me. See, this is why I need wood. I'd have to go to cut down a tree manually, hopefully for one of the last times. So that's the solar engine, ready to go. Uh, next up, I want a coal engine, because I want to make sure that this thing um, can run even though uh, there's no sunlight. So when it's nighttime out, it'll still run. So in order to do that, we're also going to make a coal engine. Could I have just a coal engine? Sure, I could. I mean, you know, you don't need to have a solar engine in there, but I'm having fun with this. The next thing we're going to need is some storage. We need a place to put um, all the items we're going to collect from the tree farm. So we're going to have to build some of these storage. There's different chests you can make. I can't build a top chest because the top chest goes on top of the uh, cart and you'll soon discover that so does the solar panels so we can't have both of them in the same spot. Uh, I decided to go with side chests. They're pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and craft these off camera but just keep in mind that you're going to need a bunch of wood in order for this to you know get made. 
Okay, so I've got my uh, side chests, my solar engine, my coal engine. The last thing I want to make is a smelter. What this can do is smelt any items that is found inside the cart. In particular, I'm going to want to smelt the wood I cut down into coal. But instead of just having a regular old smelter, I want to upgrade this guy into an advanced smelter. It's an even better form of the smelter. For this, I'm going to need an advanced PCB. And uh, we can go ahead and advance this guy right now, provided I have one more diamond in my inventory. So what this overall cost me? About 10 diamonds? That's not too bad. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. Uh, now, the other thing we're going to need is a lot, and I mean a lot, of um, fuel for this process to run. In fact, I'm going to come down here and see how my cold coke production is going. Oh, good, we've got 16 cold coke. The good news about cold coke is it's more powerful uh, and as, as a fuel source um, than regular old coal. So after we've uh, kind of focused it down in this coke oven here, it works really well as a fuel source. We do need to power our cart assembler here. So let's start assembling our cart. First off, like I told you, I need those engines. So I'm gonna place the coal engine right in there and the solar engine right in there. And you can see it's kind of adding to the cart as we go along. If I were to take the coal engine away, all that kind of stuff would change, right? Both on the visual, but also the complexity here. So we have a total hull capacity of 500. So far we've used up 35. We're not gonna use much of this 500 for this cart, but down the line we may add some stuff. Adding in the storage, so now we have a place to assemble um, and put items. Now the only downside to this whole complexity thing is the more complex the cart, the more time it takes to um, assemble. So you can see the total time here is going to take about 4 minutes 46 seconds um, to assemble this thing. Uh, let's add one of the more complex items like the hardened cutter. Oh, now all of a sudden it's going to take 45 minutes to assemble this cart and throwing in the advanced smelter it's going to take about an hour to make this thing. So I better give it some fuel right here. I guess you can't take coal coke, huh? I thought you could. All right, well, coal goes in. I'm gonna have to go get some more coal um, or some charcoal or something like that. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is hit assemble. So let me just double check that I've got everything I want here. Yeah, this all looks good. Now, um, once you've assembled your cart, uh, you can't modify it unless you add on to the side of this block a modifier upgrade, which is allows you to disassemble and modify carts. It's not terribly hard to make, um, but it does require a little bit of that reinforced metal, so yeah, you're not going to want to go ahead and do that unless you really want to. Um, so you want to kind of double check and make sure you've added everything before you click the assemble button, which I'm going to do now because I'm pretty sure I've got everything I want. Go ahead, buddy. All right, so now this uh, whole progress thing shuts down and it starts cooking up a cart for me. You can see the progress right down here. It's gonna take an hour. So uh, I recommend uh, going ahead and kicking this thing off and going to work on another project while that cart assembler is running. We'll probably come back next episode and uh, take a look at the final product. For now, I'm gonna clean up my inventory and be right back. And what good timing we've got because we have kind of hit the old wrapping up point. So we've got about 59 minutes and 50 seconds for this cart to start getting assembled. I'm going to let this run. And then next episode we'll be back and we'll be ready to uh, start playing around with this cart. We should also by that point have a good amount of creoso oil ready to go so I can start making myself some tracks. We've already got nine buckets worth of it and uh, we're going to need quite a bit. You don't need a ton, but you definitely need a good amount. Um, we're not going to make the most complex cart system in the world so we shouldn't have too much of a problem we're gonna need one or two other machines from railcraft to get started so we'll start making those next episode as well um, so basically my end goal here is to pre to uh, create a uh, tree farm that I can then produce charcoal from that I can then run my base with so uh, I've got these basic uh, dynamos down here they're out of coal I'm out of coal I need to go mine to get more coal so that I can actually keep that you know little thing running so yeah all right guys for now direwolf20 signing off hope you've enjoyed the episode we'll have a nice tree farm by the end of next episode I hope and then we should have a pretty solid amount of uh, production of resources all right guys take it easy